In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to do our second problem set on the quotient rule, doing problems 23 and 24 out of our text. Now like any other problem with the quotient rule, we're going to have some function divided by another function. We assign 1 is equal to f and 1 is equal to g. Then we find f prime and g prime and then we plug everything into our formula for the quotient rule. As long as you remember the formula, and you will need to memorize this formula for your classes, I'm almost positive, the quotient rule is very easy to do because it's generally obvious what's going to be f and what's going to be g. Now we need to make a little bit of modification for these problems because in these problems we have x as a function of t. In this quotient rule here, I've had d by dx. We can just as easily write this as d by dt. So basically what it says now is we're taking the derivative of f of g with respect to t. And this is assuming that f and g are both functions of t. But these are, you know, details that the book puts in to confuse you. The important part is, is just to keep everything well organized and you shouldn't have any problems doing these derivatives. So let's start by doing problem 23 where we have x is equal to 3t divided by 2t plus 1. This is equal to f divided by g, which implies that f is equal to 3t and g is equal to 2t plus 1. We still need f prime and g prime. f prime is equal to 3. g prime is equal to 2. Having f prime and g prime and f and g, we have all the components that we need to solve the derivative now. So the derivative of x with respect to t, which is equal to x prime, is equal to g times f prime, which is 2t plus 1 times 3 minus f times g prime, which is 3t times 2, all divided by g squared, which is 2t plus 1 squared. Now if you take out these little notations that I wrote in the top of the bottom, you have x prime is equal to this little bit of a mess there, which is not a complicated mess, and that's the derivative. It's, you know, what our f and what our g was was obvious. We just find the derivatives, and we plugged everything into the formula, and we have got the derivative out on the other side. So let's go on and let's do problem 24 to get a little bit more practice. x is equal to t squared plus 1 divided by 3t. Now we can do this two different ways. We are going to start out by doing our quotient rule, but then we're also going to do this with the power rule to demonstrate that it's exactly the same. So we have f divided by g, so f is going to be equal to t squared plus 1, g is going to be equal to 3t. f prime is equal to 2t, g prime is equal to 3. So let's plug everything into our formula to get x prime. And we get g times f prime minus f times g prime, all divided by g squared, which is 9t squared. That's 3t squared, by the way. Now because I'm going to demonstrate that this is equivalent to doing it with the power rule, let me simplify things a little bit further than what I normally do. This is 6t squared minus 3t squared plus 3, all divided by 9t squared. So this will also be equal to 
one third minus one over three t squared. I suppose I should write out those steps there. That's uh, three t squared plus three divided by nine t squared just combining terms. And then I took the 3t squared divided by the 9t squared, and then I took the minus 3 divided by the 9t squared to get this out. Now to do this using the power rule, we're going to go back to the beginning where we have t squared plus 1 divided by 3t, and I'm going to divide out the terms immediately to get 1 over, or t over 3 plus 1 over 3t to the negative 1. Let me rewrite this first term here to something we're more familiar with, which is 1 third t. Now that we have this, we take our typical power rule, which is 1 third, bring the negative 1 to the front, so they get minus 1 third t to the negative 2, which we then write as 1 third minus 1 over 3t squared. And that's identically equal, and it should be, because your derivatives are exactly the same, regardless of the technique that you use to solve them. Mathematically, they're the same. They might look a little bit different, but you can always show that one is equal to the other. We often do the quotient rule as a matter of either convenience or necessary. In this case, I felt it was easier to just use our power rule, but oftentimes that's not the case, especially when you have something like sine of x divided by x squared. You cannot do that using the power rule. You're going to have to use the quotient rule for that. So we got a couple more examples on the quotient rule. And then we'll also combine our power rule and quotient rule. Then we're going to do trigonometric derivatives. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do more product rule and quotient rule practice problems. So make sure you get all the help you need and send us any questions if you need more.